In this video, we're going to be updating you on some of our favourite 90 Day Fiancé couples and what they've been up to. Keep watching to discover the completely unexpected development in Danielle and Mohammed's relationship. And remember Patrick and Miriam? They might still have a shot at love. We'll reveal all. But first, Darcy, Tom and Jesse. We first met Darcy Silver in the first season of Before the 90 Days when she flew from America to Amsterdam to meet her long distance boyfriend, Jesse. Darcy was a 42 year old mum of two. Jesse was 24 and perhaps predictably, things didn't go as planned with the couple encountering way too many differences. He got pissed off that my feet were on his shoe. Oh, she was stepping on my shoe, trying to put them on, stepping on it. Absolutely madness. He's like, how would you like it if I did it to you? I was like, here, take my shoe. Take my thousand dollar shoe. Go ahead and step on it. Here you go. She grabs her Louis Vuittons and she throws them at me. It's an assault. And after yet another dramatic fight, Jesse dumped Darcy in New York City before ever putting a ring on it. But Darcy didn't give up on love and on season three, she returned to the show, but this time with her new sweetheart, Tom from the UK. As soon as Tom appeared on the show, fans started to notice some similarities between him and Jesse. For example, how they both obsessed over their looks or the way they both treated Darcy. Do you think maybe sometimes that you, you know, you want to love so bad that you kind of ignore those red flags sure. every now and then? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, yeah, a little bit of a downfall that I have. Now, Tom and Darcy's relationship was kind of rocky for a while. And after seeing some photos of him getting cozy with another woman online, Darcy met him in New York City, yes, again, to confront him about the photos. Cue more dramatic fighting and Tom eventually admitting to being in love with another woman that he met in Milan Fashion Week, a lady named Shannon. He proceeded to then fat shame Darcy. Did you put weight on? What was that? and blame her for everything that went wrong in their relationship, saying she didn't love him the way he needed to be loved. Because, get this, apparently, according to Tom, she was still in love with Jesse. They were done after that, as you can imagine. After the breakup, Darcy claimed that she helped bankroll Tom on multiple occasions and spent over $2,000 on him. But Tom says the opposite. In a since deleted Instagram story, he seems to be asking his ex-girlfriend for compensation. Tom wrote, quote, can I have the things I bought you and the money for the canceled trip? Think you owe me. Tired of people lying to cover their own ass. Fans really didn't like that and they were quick to roast Tom for this post. And now there's been another twist. Both of Darcy's exes appear to have developed a friendship or at least a business relationship. Tom posted a cryptic and now deleted photo of him and Jesse together on Instagram and hinted at a potential collaboration project. Fans speculate that they might start a gym clothing line since Tom is in the fashion industry and Jesse works as a personal trainer. Did they talk about breaking Darcy's heart over a cup of coffee? Who knows, but the two couldn't be more perfect for each other. When I heard about that, I thought that was a little, you know, kick in the ass, yeah. to be honest with you, but um, yeah, it was like a slap in the face. But that's their style. But here's the thing. Karma has a habit of coming back and biting you. And it seems that that's exactly what happened to Tom. Shannon, the woman that Tom dumped Darcy for, has been with another man named Jeff for four years and they're now engaged. This means they were together when her thing with Tom happened, but she chose to stay with Jeff, not Tom. Apparently, Tom knew about Shannon's relationship all along and didn't really care. Tom said, quote, to be fair, I don't care. So I'd prefer not to engage. It was just a fling. Tom soon moved on to another lady, Amanda McAdams. The couple seemed to be working really well and he even spent Christmas with her family and introduced her to his TLC co-stars. But in January of 2020, he announced that they'd broken up. Now, Tom has confessed he's not single anymore and everyone is speculating whether or not he's back with Amanda and there's even thoughts that he might be part of a new season of 90 Day Fiance with Amanda. What about Jesse? Well, he was back on 90 Day Fiance What Now? and fans definitely weren't too happy about it, as they claim he's manipulative, narcissistic, and obsessed with Darcy. As soon as he appeared on the show, he started talking about her. Some fans are even angry at TLC for bringing him back, really angry. One fan wrote, at TLC, why do you keep shoving him down our throats? 
begging you to stop giving him a platform for his narcissistic bullying behavior. But the backlash doesn't stop there. In April 2020, Jesse published a book called Intermittent Fasting, and he wasn't very happy about the reviews he received. In fact, he actually threatened to take some legal action against some of the worst ones on Amazon. As for Darcy, well, she's found herself a new man. She's dating Georgi Rusev, a Bulgarian who lives in America. She recently wrote a sweet birthday message for him and thanked him for helping her smile beautifully inside and out. Fans have noticed that he shows her affection and support online, making her feel special. Has Darcy finally found the one? We certainly hope so. Melanie and Davar. Season three stars Melanie and Devar quickly fell in love when Melanie, who had recently divorced from the father of her 11 year old son, was on vacation at the resort where Devar worked in Jamaica. Before she left, Devar proposed to her and they got engaged. Oh, true love. Not too long after, Devar got his K-1 visa and moved to the US, but all that glitters is not gold and complications soon began. Melanie's family wasn't very supportive of the interracial relationship. I guess I'm a little concerned about how people will react to him just because he is Jamaican. And I just don't want him to be disrespected in any way. I don't want anyone to be rude to him. You know, obviously at first we had reservations. We were shell-shocked. Like, oh my God, what's going on? That you would choose to marry a Jamaican? And her sister doubted Devar's real intentions. Well, uh, we're talking today to Bev, who feels her sister Melanie is being duped by her husband Devar, who proposed just six weeks after meeting Melanie on a resort in Jamaica, where he worked as a lifeguard. Which is why things got worse when Devar said he wanted to send the better part of his income back to his family in Jamaica. There were a lot of arguments about this, and Melanie even mentioned that she might draft a prenuptial agreement. Now, I'm not really sure how I feel about this. What are your thoughts? How would you feel if your partner wanted to send back money to his home country? Would that be a deal breaker for you? I mean, it's his hard earned money. He's free to do whatever he wants with it, right? Or do you think Melanie's right and that money earned in the States should stay in the States to be spent by them? Let me know in the comments down below. In the end, as far as the couple were concerned, it seems that love has prevailed. And after tying the knot on the show, in November 2017, they welcomed their daughter Ava and happily shared it on Instagram with all of their fans. And as far as work's concerned, Devar has gone on to become a trained underwater welder. But the thing is, given that the pair spent a lot of time apart with Melanie traveling a lot for work, a lot of rumors have spread online that they've actually separated. But regardless of what you might read on social media, the pair are very much still married and very happy together. In fact, they recently let slip that they're actually trying for a baby. So watch this space. Patrick and Miriam. They say that long distance relationships aren't easy, and that certainly proved to be the case with Patrick and Miriam from season one of Before the 90 Days. The pair met online, and Patrick decided to travel to France to meet her in person. But Miriam had been keeping a little secret from him. She actually had a boyfriend, Paul Patrick. She said she had a boyfriend, now. She had a what? You're in Paris. Right. What the hell you mean she's got a boyfriend? I know many guys, they they can be made about this situation. They can be, oh no, it's a shame for me, you know. Uh, but him, he have totally accept to be in the friend zone because maybe he need me in his life or friend. What am I thinking? I'm thinking you need to keep your little unhappy ass off the internet. So fast forward to season two of 90 Day Fiance What Now? when Miriam, who had recently broken up with that boyfriend, traveled to Kentucky to try and rekindle the relationship with Patrick. They ended up going on a few dates. Patrick even introduced her to his family, but that wasn't enough. Miriam went home single and that was the end of their relationship, or so it seemed. There might be a little bit more than meets the eye with this one. For a start, they've remained great friends. Patrick recently posted a throwback clip of the show and wrote the caption talking about how great Miriam is. He said, quote, she is a great person and friend. This was such a great time in my life because I learned a lot about myself and was able to mature in a way I couldn't have if I didn't go to France. And recently, after reconnecting during the coronavirus pandemic, Patrick has said, quote, once this quarantine is over, Miriam has a free trip to Vegas. I'm paying for everything and she deserves it. I really believe we can make something work now. They are part of the new spin-off, Self-Quarantined, and as both are single and reconnecting, maybe this time they can make it work. 
What do you think? Is third time a charm? As for now, well, Patrick is doing MMA fighting and working as a DJ in Las Vegas. In 2019, he had a son, Patrick Jr., with his now ex-girlfriend Renata, and they both co-parent their child. He's also father to a five-year-old girl, Italy, from a previous relationship. He often shares photos of his children on Instagram and videos of himself DJing. Miriam, on the other hand, is an MTV hostess, and she interviews celebs at events and award shows. Again, she's also very active on Instagram and runs a YouTube channel as well. Coming up, we'll tell you what's going on between international couple Avery and Ash, and then what's really happening between Daniel and Mohammed. Stay tuned to find out if they're finally reconnected. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos about your favorite TV shows and celebs. Avery and Ash. Avery and Ash didn't exactly have a smooth start. Even before the two met in person, they'd already broken up several times. But this didn't stop Avery, an influencer and single mum, and after nine months of ups and downs, she travelled from the US to Australia to meet her boyfriend, whose profession was a dating coach. Once together, problems started to appear. Avery was worried that Ash's job made him a smooth talker, and she wasn't too happy about his dating seminar and views on gender roles. If you look at your grandmother, grandfather, the men knew what they had to do. They went out, they worked, they, bring them, they brought the money. The woman went home. They were, they were quite happy, they were cooking. She's stripped me down in a way that, um, as a man, I actually don't know what to do. She's like a pit bull, holding onto it, and she wouldn't let go saying that I was not listening, I was sexist, and we just can't stop arguing right now. There were also some trust issues, since Ash had lied about his divorce, saying that it had happened a decade ago, when it had really only been a year. Bad move, Ash. Sian said you guys only divorced a year ago. The couple's plan to apply for a K-1 visa and move to the United States came crumbling down when Avery met Ash's ex-wife and it caused her to reevaluate whether moving to a different country and leaving Ash's son behind was really the right move. She said, quote, I have so much love for him, but he has a son here and it does kind of worry me in the back of my head that he doesn't even realise how hard it's going to be moving forward for us. When Avery went back home in the season finale, the intention was that the two were going to do everything it would take to make the relationship work, but sadly, it seems that that was it for them. While doing an Instagram Q&A, a fan asked Ash if he was still with Avery, to which he simply replied, no. On top of that, Avery posted a picture of her toned body on Instagram with the caption, revenge body. It seems a split may have been caused, at least in part, due to a controversial dating seminar that Ash gave, teaching women how to find Mr. Right, in which he made some very misogynistic comments and also addressed himself as being single in front of Avery, which fans didn't like at all. After the backlash, Ash went on a social media hiatus, and upon his return, he posted a video apologizing. Because I should have been more mindful of being able to actually manage that situation, which I and in a recent interview, Ash opened up a little bit more about the breakup and confessed that the reason Avery broke up with him was because of trust issues. He said that though they're not together now, they remain close friends. When asked if he was seeing anyone new, he denied it. I still love her and that's not going to change so soon, he confessed. And he seemed to leave the door a little bit open by saying, we departed, but we departed because of circumstances, long distance and the pressures of the show. I still love her, so for me to move on will take a while. We'll wait and see what the future has in store for Ash and Avery. Danielle and Mohammed. Danielle and Mohammed are perhaps the most notorious couple in the show's history. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. Uh, I wanna tell something about kissing that I'm not allowed to kiss in this uh, time. Ever since Mohammed moved from Tunisia to Ohio after meeting Danielle online, fans of the show have watched the ups and downs of their relationship, which included cheating scandals, lies, fights, and cops. I am going to guarantee I will get your ass deported because you're a user. 
I'm gonna call police on her. You backstabbed me this whole time! She even tried to get him deported when he left her and moved to Miami just two months after getting his green card. In the end, Mohammed convinced Danielle to file for a divorce instead of an annulment so that he could stay in America. And now, three years after their divorce, it seems like things are finally looking up for them. In April 2020, Danielle confessed during the premiere of 90 Day Fiancé self-quarantine that she and Mohammed are now on, quote, good terms, and that they've forgiven each other. And he realized, and then with everything that's happening in the world, I think he just had a change of heart. And he realizes too that we'll always be connected because of our situation. She even expressed some concern about his well-being and said that they've started to build a friendship and that they talk maybe twice a week. I bet you didn't see that one coming, right? Danielle said, quote, We divorced 34 months after our marriage. I haven't seen Mohammed in three years. He reached out to me about a month ago and we've been chit-chatting here and there. Back in December, Mohammed announced in a now-deleted Instagram post that he was going to start traveling with his dog Bowie across America as a full-time truck driver. Since then, he's been sharing his life on the road and has continued to deliver supplies throughout the COVID-19 crisis, sharing his journeys on his Instagram page. As for Danielle, well, she's found the lockdown period a lot tougher. You see, Danielle works as a carer for mentally handicapped adults, and during the whole coronavirus lockdown period, because she's considered an essential worker, she continued to work. But that made things more complicated because she was sharing a home with seven other people, so coming back and staying socially responsible and socially distanced was much harder. The seven others in her home included her son and her newborn granddaughter, Kinsley, who was born on April the 21st. She's also living a healthier lifestyle and losing weight. Back in November 2019, she lost 15 pounds and continues to do so while documenting it on her Instagram account. As for their love lives, well, Danielle confirmed in an interview with In Touch that they are both single. Back in May 2019, she shared on Instagram that she was seeing someone new, but they're not together anymore, and she's now dedicating her time to her family. As for Mohammed, Danielle said that he's too busy to date anyone right now. Are there any plans of a reunion for the former couple? Danielle said, I suggested one time he should stop when he's in Ohio and we could meet up, but it just all depends where he's at. But she assures everyone she's moved on for good and has no intention to rekindle any kind of romance with her ex. So it seems that there's no more bad blood for these two and that they've both moved on and seemingly are both friends. What do you think? Could you be friends with your ex after all that drama? Leave a comment below and don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and check out some of our other 90 Day Fiancé videos on screen now. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next video.